Hi, my name is Krista Foss. I'm a writer and I'm the author of Half-Life, which comes out with McClelland and Stewart in March 2021. And I'm here today with Stina Jensen, who is going to help me with my Danish pronunciation. Because my main character, Ellen Henriksen, is based in Milwaukee. She's a physics teacher, but she's of Danish-American descent. And she has a love-hate relationship with that heritage just because of everything that's going on in her family. But I do use some Danish words in the book, and, um, and I certainly know that I need some help with them. Um, I wanted to say welcome to you, Stina, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you do. Thank you. Well, I, so I, I work as an intercultural mediator, and that includes uh, some translation work, some interpreting, and also some language teaching. And I teach uh, my own language for foreign speakers, so it's Danish. I know I don't look, <laughs> you look more Danish than me, but <laughs> I, um, I grew up in Copenhagen, and I'm adopted. So um, I am like the real thing. <laughs> I find that it's much more challenging. I have to be much more careful not to speak too fast. Uh, and I'm also from the capital, so we tend to eat all the words. Um, and so I try to sing when I teach pronunciation <laughs> because it's easier to understand. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> and then I teach Spanish at the and I have uh, done Spanish forever, so that's that's actually what I did during my studies. And then English, and English is you know older people, people Danish people that need a uh, little bit more than hello. I want a beer in a bar or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's the only thing my Norwegian relatives need. <laughs> and I do terminology, and that terminology is like a professional language. Um, it's more on a company level. Um, so it's it's a huge mesh in companies normally and they really want for example if they need to do technical documentation or something they need to use the same words it's extremely important that they place the right order with the same word and um, that there's a whole management thing that i i help companies with <laughs> well, it's fascinating that's that's all incredible. language <laughs> today, today it's going to be very very simple <laughs> <laughs> so you're just helping a Canadian. And actually, I thought I would start with the capital because I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those people who heard somebody say Copenhagen and thought that sounds more of an insider's way to pronounce the capital city. So I started pronouncing that way until I was <clears throat> told that that irritates Danes to hear Copenhagen being said Copenhagen, say it Copenhagen. But how do, it, how does, how do you actually say the capital city to another Dane because actually saying it like a Dane is completely different. I think that um, I don't know what happened, but with the capital name, they tried to change it so that you avoid the sound in in the, <laughs> the one that makes problems. Um, so the way uh, for foreigners normally and the way we say Copenhagen is Copenhagen. So I would I would say it fast. I would say Copenhagen. And I almost eat everything. My boyfriend is from uh, Jule, so Jutland. Uh, and he would say, Kuhnhaun, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> okay, so I'm and, gonna try it. I wanna try it. Kuhnhaun. Yes, almost. Okay. And if I sing, Kuhnhaun, like in the train, maybe it's easier. Kuhnhaun. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I read and asked, it's really, it's actually, it's really difficult. This is the most problematic sound, actually. I read um, that Danish people make mistakes in this sound, using this sound when they say first and her. And maybe it's similar to the, to the first, the sound, her, I don't know. Interesting. Her. Try again. Ku, ku. Yes, yes, you ku. got it. Ku, ku. Ben. Ben. Home. Home. Yes. Home. Wow, that is so difficult. I have to say, and I don't know that everybody knows this, like my father, my Norwegian father used to say he could read Danish, but he couldn't understand a thing a Danish person was saying. Um, and then it was reversed for Swedes and the Finns, because their language is Cyrillic based, is a whole other thing. But um, how do you do you is it easy for you to understand a norwegian and a swede um because danish is quite different in its pronunciation 
because I'm used to being around them, it's easier. I traveled a lot to Sweden when I was younger. We only had the Swedish public channel at home and the Danish two public channels. So we watched a lot of Swedish television. I understand better the Swede. And for example, but it's not for all Danes because for example, my partner, he doesn't understand Swedish. He understands better German because he's closer to Germany. <laughs> Well, there is a little bit slightly different uh, cadence. Would you call it a cadence between uh, Danish and, and Swedish and Norwegian? There's a Swedish and Norwegian is it a bit more sing-songy, and then or yes. am I wrong? That's why I've started to sing because I found I I met some um, some people that were learning Swedish, and after a year and a half, they were already speaking it well. And I thought that's strange because it doesn't really happen in Danish, apart from really talented or German people. <laughs> and 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 I think it's the phonetics that they sing a lot. It's easier to catch when you you sing. <laughs> it's really smart, and you have a beautiful voice too, so that helps, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so the first word that I need help with, or I, I use about a half a dozen, but one of them is um, quite important. The word um, means, I understand it means voyage or voyage or journey in, in Danish, but in my book, it's not used to describe a voyage. It's actually the name of a piece of furniture because Alan Henriksen's father, Tig, is a, um, a mid-century modern designer of furniture and he's got quite a cult-like status. And so one of the pieces that has a lot of meaning to her is this dining room set, which he has called, and you can hear me mangle this word, I, re, I, I pronounce it as sorraisi. Mm -hmm. so, I would understand. <laughs> right, so, but I know I'm mispronouncing it. How do you pronounce sorraisi? I would say, um, so if I should just say it, it would be sorraisi. Sorraisi. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Do no. you speak? Do you speak Norwegian also? No, I mean, okay. I, I mean, my Norwegian relatives unfortunately all speak brilliant English, and so it made it just made, I made, and then I wasn't over there a lot, so it just made me very lazy. <laughs> so yeah. No. <laughs> so much to the consternation of my father and my Norwegian grandmother, I never, never learned the language. <laughs> um, okay, so my second word is is sort of a. Um, I understand it as almost like an old-fashioned slang. Uh, the word is, um, I, I read it as pit, uh, P-Y-T, um, and my character, Meta, who is Ellen's sister, and she's kind of fun, and she's a singer-songwriter, but she knows, she's the, she's the one who took the Danish lessons in the bottom of the, the Lutheran church in, in Milwaukee, and so she gets some guidebook Danish, but she just throws out a word here and there, and she uses this word quite ironically. I understand it means kind of whatever, Never mind. Pit. Yes. Am it I saying it right? <laughs> pit. 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 Um, so it's like so the Y, we say pew. 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 Yeah, yes, yes. Like I, Oh, it's like pewt. Pewt. It's like pit. But the last one is because there's a push. It's like yeah, you have to exaggerate a lot in Danish in everything you say. So it's like, pute. Pute, 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 pute. Okay, now I'm hearing it, pute. Um, it, you know, is this a word, do you ever use this word or is it um, not a, a word that you use? Would you ever say Actually, pute? Kind of, you know, a catchy word that you use for people go down with, and this is a serious matter, but people have breakdown and and all these things. Burnout, burnout is called. Burnout, them. yeah. And, and then, um, in general, you say a lot, you have to learn how to say put, you know. <laughs> it's like a, like a philosophy, a way of coping. Yes, you just have to learn, and it's like the, the movement is put, you know, doesn't matter. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> if I don't finish today, I finish tomorrow, which is actually not the Danish moral normally, because we are like, but um, probably like you, <laughs> but but um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a way of almost saying, or it, it's a word that we use a lot uh, lately. That everything goes so fast, technology. You have your working email on your phone and screens everywhere. Uh, so <laughs> you don't read a book, you read an iPad. You know? <laughs> so it's good to say pute sometimes yes. and just let it go. <laughs> I have to say pute. 
<laughs> okay, and my last one, of course, is food related because I love all things food related. I find this word very difficult. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but the context is that my character, Alan, has a fascination with marshmallow based cookies, and there's a variety of them in, in uh, where she lives. She can get a, a, a what's called a scooter pie then becomes a moon pie. She can get a wagon wheel, a Malamar, a Whippet. They're all chocolate, marshmallow, and cookie. And so her mother, trying to elevate her, uh, introduces her to the, the Danish, a Danish version of this cookie, which is much more sophisticated, I think. And it is called a, and I'm gonna totally get this word wrong because I know the D in Danish is very difficult. A fle, fleudbulle. A flutable? <laughs> I understand it, <laughs> but um, the D is not a hard one, so you have to do like the, like the in English. So the D, when normally when you say that, then it's easier because you say flutable. Oh, okay, that's not hard. Flutable. Flutable. Yeah. Oh. Just remember the every time you see a D, sometimes it's not, you know, in, in, in the beginning of a, of a word, it's a hard one. So it's like, the, like, okay, that's our the in Neutrum, yeah, neutral form. Uh, but um, then it's a normal D. But if you see it inside a word, probabilities is that it's not being pronounced very high. <laughs> okay, wow, that's so it's flu the bulla, flu the bulla, flu, and then it's uh, the last, it's like. Bolle. Bolle. you go down. Bolle. Fleur de bolle. Fleur de yes. bolle. <laughs> yes. Perfect. I'm obviously not a linguistic person at all, right? You can see how. It's like the queen. <laughs> it's really nice. And oh my God. People <laughs> do that. <laughs> Nobody's ever said that to me before. I That's <laughs> because I'm teaching you to speak very correctly. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, okay, so my final <clears throat> request from you is, uh, you know, there's a lot of words that, that are trending, and especially I think with the pandemic, people are looking for ways of coping and we're all, you know, winter's long, right? I don't know if winter's long for you in Denmark, but winter always feels long here, even though I'm in the most southern part of Canada, it just still feels like winter goes on forever. So this big, this Norwegian word, Filutsliv, has been trending. It's like, Oh, embrace the outdoors, just get out there, be outdoors all the time. Um, slightly irritating. <laughs> but I always think that I, I just, I'm just wanted to know if there's a Danish word that you think we should all know that's not hygge. Because yes, hygge, that's not, not hygge, because <laughs> hygge got like, Hygge got its own movie. I mean, I, I used to be able to go oh to my my cinema God. and it, there was a movie about hygge. And, okay. and that's, you're never going to go in in, in 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 your in Copenhagen and find a movie about a Canadian word ever. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> so what um, what word do you think that every everybody should know a Danish word or or even a word that's just cool to know? Actually, I think that Hugo was something that surprised all of us because. Uh, it, it, it's so deep in us that uh, we didn't even consider that it was a, a big thing. I know it's difficult to translate, but apart from that, <laughs> but um, actually I looked and Friluftsliv exists also in Danish, outdoor life, but it's not um, what I want to say. I Something similar, when you said Hygge, I was like, cannot be Hygge, the only thing you think about is Hygge, and then I found an article from October, um, 26th of October this year. And um, it said that a new word, Samfundsid, has been uh, trending abroad. Um, okay. The Danish word, Samfundsid. And it means to put the interest of society first. And it's something that our prime minister has said a lot on the news. And um, uh, BBC uh, has talked about it, like the word that describes Denmark and Danish mentality and the New York Post, like how Denmark got through the crisis. And now, you know, it was the first wave of the uh, pandemic. So we haven't got through it yet. <laughs> yet and you probably heard something about mink and everything. I heard about the mink farmers, <laughs> yes, and the mink yes. variant. Yeah, very frightening. Um, She's not uh, having the same popularity as she had in the first wave. But 
but uh, back then apparently this word was something that that was getting a lot of attention we didn't realize that much here but abroad it got a lot of attention i think actually it is an important word like it's a it's important word as we go into the second wave because it, it is challenging and people are getting grumpy but we do have to um our numbers are high here right and i'm in an area where the the we were in a we've just been put into a red zone and there's lockdowns second lockdowns coming so yeah we have to we have to that's the word that is the word of the day that is the perfect word <laughs> yeah that's right that's right well thank you so much it's been delightful and i feel like i feel like i'm just beginning to understand how to properly pronounce um danish words and um, that's thanks to you thank you very much